Let's show some respect to Lithuania. Watch this on the side until Russia dies. So we have to cool peace deal. Turn the music off. And let's show some respect to Lithuania. Let's Baltics go. Baltics with our last Baltic country. If you didn't watch the Latvia episode, it basically... Don't even need to research anymore. Just wait for the death. Don't so. play with us, Estonia. Welcome to the creepier Baltic sister, Lithuania. This guy's working out, man. Look at these arms. That's what you should it's do, boys. Geography. It's no! about Lithuania. Everyone. We know that in 1944 they had amazing tank divisions killing the French. Barbs. Okay, once again, I know some of you guys are kind of like, come on, Barbs, stop calling the two countries creepy. But my response to that would be, it's kind of... First of all, I want to say, no offense, Lithuania, but I think your flag is very ugly. If, if you ever meet someone that has clothes like this or a car like this, that is... Ready for 2022. That's not a that's not a good looking flag. Thank you, Ludward. I don't know. It's the the the, the colors are dude. Russia is holding, man. I swear to God. True, and it's not necessarily no a bad thing if used in a charming way. Some people like creepy. I mean, just capitalize off of it. I mean, like maybe Latvia they made uh, that tell us why right. Turkmenistan did that thing with the burning hole. Belize made bank off of whale vomit. <laughs> Who knew that stuff would be so expensive off the market anyway, huh? Cha-ching. Okay, we need why to. Why is back everybody to the... having huge biases? I hate that shit. It makes me feel bad about Lithuania. myself. Let's find out where it is now, shall we? Now, Lithuania may be the... I gotta be honest though, I was about to make a joke of Americans. Uh, Americans probably cannot show you Lithuania on the map. Sometimes I don't even know which one is which and which one has which uh, capital. Just Baltic country in size, but it kind of got the short end of the stick when it came to coastline. First of all, the yeah, I gotta work out in the area of Europe known as the Baltic, which no shocker borders the Baltic Sea to the north. The nation is divided into ten counties, with the capital Vilnius located in the south. They are also surrounded by four countries. Remember, this little chopped up exclave Kaliningrad belongs to Russia, in which they share this. Crazy that Kaliningrad still belongs to Russia, right? This is fucking mental, dude. Ninety-eight kilometer long sandy barricade with dunes. Are we getting legit stuck here, man? Like. Come on. And it all Russia can't keep this up. Lagoon, this can you raise the volume? This is the highest. Man. This is literally where almost all seabound shipping comes in. I think the video itself is very uh, quiet. Cargo at that dinky little dock at Palanga. So essentially, Russia has the bigger portion of the lagoon, but Lithuania has the only way out. Eh, we don't need. We have opening at Vistula Lagoon on Strait of Baltisk. It has funny looking star fortress thing to welcome you. Oh, Russia, I can't wait to do your episode. The largest cities after Vilnius are Konus and the city we just talked about, Klaipeda. And surprisingly, for such a small country, they actually have four international airports. The busiest in order being Vilnius, Konus, Palanga, and Sholai Internationals. Now, here's Sholai. the thing. Lithuania is proud to claim that they, debatedly, have the geographical center of Europe. Like, they literally even built a monument and sculpted... You're proud of that? You're the geographical center of Europe? Oh, this is... Okay. It's like when your younger brother collects Bobby dolls. You just let him fucking do it. You don't ask. Ultra Park next to showcase it. Nope. Uh uh. Wrong. No. Ha. <laughs> no. Really? Hungary? Even you? Yup. No. no. I mean, the Guinness Book of World Records recognizes my village of. No. no. Make of it what you will. The country doesn't really have any territorial anomalies or disputes except for kind of a maritime dispute with Latvia up north, something about oil reserves. Then there's that weird mm. salient that juts into Belarus. I think we already talked about that in the Belarus episode, did we? <laughs> And let's not even get started on how Lithuania was like, eh, I'm just gonna take this Dievenishku Isturinis National Park from you guys, even if it does give me like a one mile wide corridor to reach it. Huh, yeah, we did. Huh, well, cool. I guess I don't have to discuss this a six minimal pot. effort. Thank you. Funny enough, there's a micronation in Lithuania, the Republic of Utspis, which is actually just another one of those bohemic hippie-ish neighborhoods in the capital of Vilnius. They kind of uh -huh. wanted to be edgy and cool, much like Freetown Christiana that we studied in the Denmark episode. Yeah, uh, these young people. <laughs> Self-proclaimed but unrecognized autonomy is like, so dope. Lithuania does kind of have a dark past. I mean, they did play a huge role in the Holocaust during World War II. They had one of the most significant Jewish populations in Europe, once nicknamed the Jerusalem of the North. Nearly the entire population of about a quarter million was killed by Nazis with a huge mass. Uh, how much? Sorry. Jerusalem of the North. Nearly the entire population of about a quarter million was killed by Nazis with. 250,000. And he means. Almost all the Jewish population, that's what he's saying. Huge massacre at Ponari. Many were sent to the HKP 562 forced labor camp. Of all of Vania, no, of the and Jewish. Today, almost various everybody memorials died. and museums and exhibitions can be found to commemorate the incident. Also, due to the high emigration rate after joining the EU, many towns started to see houses and buildings and properties left unattended and decaying, like the Ignalia nuclear power plant, mm. the Palace of Sports and Concerts, the trade. Oh, that looks so communist, man. Thank you, Anderbon. Yeah, that kind of sets the mood, right? Oh, and they also have a devil's museum. 
and a KGB experience in a former Soviet bunker where you can pay to pretend to be a prisoner, getting yelled at and interrogated. That sounds fucking interesting. I love streaming. Charming. That. Speaking of which, some places of interest might include and keep the NCAA peace conference. Really pronounce these Baltic words because they're so hard. These castles, this monastery, the Liberty Boulevard, the Hill of Three Crosses, the Monument of the Victims of Fascism, sick, the man. Funicular Railway of this place, the wow, Museum the for the Blind, the Cat Museum, the Museum of Illusions, Museum. the Frank Zappa Memorial, the Pan House, the Orvidas Garden, and finally the two most iconic cultural landmarks that might really give you a feel of what Lithuania is all about. The Hill of Crosses, which has over 100,000 crosses, Damn. and nobody really knows why it got started that way. And even though the Vatican says it's a holy place full of power, the locals think it's kind of creepy. And the Hill of Witches, a sculpture park with sinister looking carved wood images depicting characters from ancient cool. Lithuanian folklore from back in the pagan days. So yeah, Lithuania is kind of like a weird pagany, Catholic-y, forest loving, technology advancing, but kind of reserved and overcast country. So much to cover. Let's start with those forests. Well, here we are again for the third time explaining basically the same thing that we discussed in the Latvia and Estonia episodes. I know you're going to be tempted to skip through this section, so to keep you watching, here's Keith on bass. He looks like a bass player. Is that all you want? Lithuania, or Lietuva, gets its name from Lietus Va, which means rain here, symbolizing the abundance of rain and fertile land. First of all, the country is made up of four general parts, the flat coast, the slightly higher uplands, the middle lowlands, and the Baltic highlands. Here you can- What? I was fighting Russians in the forest for fucking five hours and now it's the Baltic highlands? Find the tallest it's the fucking Russian forest ring, bro. Oxtoyas, at only about 293 meters in elevation, making Lithuania the flattest. Oh the at this point, I feel like the stream is almost over. I want to just probably blind, cheat, just like and I just want to show the peace conference. Boggy marshland and swamps, as well as forests. The longest river being the Neman, which starts in Belarus, flowing through Konus, locking into the Konus Reservoir. However, the largest lake would be Lake Drukshai, shared partially with Belarus. Wait, did I mention that in the Belarus episode? <laughs> Also, you have an island split between Belarus and Lithuania in Lake Ryčiu, and two islands and two peninsulas in Lake Drukšie or Drisvati. Dang, I did a good job in the Belarus episode. I'm making my job so much Tax easier. Tax delete the, the units. Yeah. Lithuania also has the highest nesting density. There's still fully equipped tower. There must be some kind of cheat, man, they use. House. They even have a holiday dedicated to them on March 25th. So anyway, resources. One thing that Lithuania is famous for is amber. Really? The Coast has a I know, fence, man. So far, everything I heard was kind of like... Okay. Cool. <laughs> wow, amber. There's no natural amber deposits. Wow. In and Lithuania was pretty much the place where it all started. In Japan, they have hentai. You have amber. In the town of Yudkrante. I'm not even going to try that again. Otherwise, much of the land is arable. Over a third is cultivated. Some national dishes of Lithuania might include things like cold beet soup, stuffed cabbage roll. Oh, that's the most disgusting food ever. Cultivated. Some national dishes of Lithuania might include things like cold beet oh. soup, stuffed cabbage ah. rolls, that costume huh? dairy product thing, Ant Hill cake. Tree cake, poppy seed rolls, blood soup, and Lilliputas cheese. Para todos los que hablan español, sí, sí, lo escuché también. Calmate a todos. And probably the most iconic dish, potato dumpling. Oh, that looks like my dad would eat. Thank you, Forza. Thank you for the 34 minutes. Whew, got through that section. Now, let's meet the Lithuanians, shall we? <laughs> Is it working? Can you kill Russia? I just deleted their army, man. Lithuanians are fine and dandy like cotton candy. Remember that Lithuanian geography, Giedra, that I met in Tokyo? She was cool. Hey, Giedra, I literally tried to hit you up for this episode to get some information, but I, I couldn't find your email. I don't know. If you're watching this right now, let me know what you think. Was it accurate? So anyway, the country has about 2.8 million people and is the largest economy in the Baltics. So fucking well. small, man. The majority of the country at around 88%. Largest Baltic economy, Estonia and that other country? Fuck you. Identify as ethnically Lithuanian. About 6% are Poles, 5% Russian, and the rest are other groups, most Slavs like Ukrainians and Belarusians with a few other minority groups mixed in as well. They use the euro as their currency, the type C plug outlet, really? and drive on the right side of the road. Where now, you should really drive. No, yeah, on the right. Baltic, yeah, yeah. Lithuania yes. is kind of like the epicenter. The Baltics were like the last places in Europe to convert to Christianity. Chat, name a famous Lithuanian person. And to this day, like Latin yeah, I was thinking, Tony G? Is Tony G Lithuanian? Ancient pagan traditions and folklore still live I don't know anything you guys are saying right now. In a nutshell, though, no idea. Was more Catholic influence and Latin Bob was Dylan. Protestant influence. 
Lithuania joined Poland in the Commonwealth and became at one point the Charles largest country Bronson? in Europe, while Latvia was taken over by the Germans and Prussians and whatnot. First of all, the language. As mentioned before, Latvian and Lithuanian are the only two surviving Baltic languages left in the world. Their older brother, Old Prussian, died out in the 1800s. Old Prussian? Two languages are old Prussian? Prussian? What the fuck's like Old Prussian? Than Greek. Half the Prussian speak German? End in S and like half of everything ends in like Onus or Ites. Lithuanian is the, well, the oldest I, I deleted the, language still in use. Some say I deleted the Russian army and they're still fucking defending. A lot of Russian viewers right now are going fucking wet over the shit. Agnes versus Ugnis, Vayus versus Veyas, Devas, Dievas, and the list goes on and on. It's pretty strange how close the coincidence is when you look into it. Oh, and to say thank you in Lithuanian, all you have to do is sneeze. Like, literally, the word for thank you is achu. Now, if you don't know anything about the Baltic, this region has the highest ratio of two things. Blonde-haired, blue-eyed people and women to men. Yes, I knew that. Dude, they have the highest blonde-haired, blue-eyed people? I didn't know that. And secondly, yeah, I read that they have the biggest ratio of women. If you are single and you suck at life, go to the Baltics. You're going to find a woman, Numbers bro. usually switch off every so often, but Lithuania usually ranks second or third between Latvia and Estonia when it comes to male and female ratios, ranging between 0.88 males. Per oh, no. It's yeah, 0 0.88 men per this woman. Yeah, I thought 88 men. Such as large portions of the male population being killed off during war. Is that fucking sad, man? It's because most of them got fucking Sometimes killed, man. Mortality rates caused Jesus. by things like smoking or alcoholism and suicide here at Jockey for now we don't gloss over the controversy but try to report it as objectively as possible and unfortunately Lithuania often ranks in the top three suicide per capita nations in the world many times first in a weird why do you think that is that's really interesting do you think it's also because of the history Weird way though, this dark fact has kind of put a sort of weirdly romanticized image on Lithuania and Lithuanians to the point where the people just kind of shrug and own up to it. I mean, this dude invented a euthanasia roller coaster concept designed to kill the passengers, and Lithuania was selected to be the childhood home of fictional character Hannibal Lecter. Oh, at... Hannibal Lecter is Lithuanian. Oh, uh -huh. pagan statues juxtaposed it's like the biggest fact so far, man. Crosses in a Damn. swampy land, and bam, you have the perfect setting for. Uh -huh. He's still no, but seriously, no, Lithuania sure. is not all jump scares it's more of like a legendary place where ancient customs still live on with a valiant populace that became the first to break away from the soviet empire and they love basketball speaking of which history time the quickest 50? way oh, i can the put it, tribes this guy unites them all and becomes king like literally the only king in all their history wars with the teutonic order the 1400s it becomes the biggest country in europe with the polish lithuanian commonwealth they briefly colonized parts of africa and the caribbean colonies sold off and lost divided by russia prussia and austria book smuggling years to keep their language alive quick independence in 1980 but then the Russians came in again. Nazis tried to take a go. Back to the USSR. Bloodiest guerrilla war in European history. Wait, against Russia or what? They're doing, they're doing guerrilla war against the Soviets? Where 30,000 Lithuanian men die. Singing revolution with all the other Baltic states. Yes. Independence oh, wow. finally in the 90s. Joins the EU and Eurozone. They somehow became the basketball capital of Europe. And it's almost like a religion to them. And here we are today. And speaking of basketball, some famous Lithuanians might include all... And I all these basketball players and this one is probably the most famous this guy who's supposed to be like the king but died before it could happen painter Mikoloyus Konstantinas director Jonas Mekas writer Salomeas Neris Virgilus Alekna celebrities with partial Lithuanian heritage but it still kind of counts to Lithuanians might include Jason Sudeikis Charles Bronson John C. Riley, Sean Penn Sasha Baron Cohen Bob Dylan William Shatner Pink Anthony Kiedis and before we finish come on if they have 5% of that shit they're everything in the world come the on what and last minute factoids instead of the Easter Bunny they have an Easter grandma they have the highest number of hot air balloons per capita they have their own national perfume scent they have some of the fastest internet in the world it's oh! considered how does that feel germany getting beaten on internet by fucking lithuania bro to whistle inside of a house Jesus. otherwise it'll explode and burn down and yeah that's about it for now lithuania let's talk about their friends now Lithuania is Dude, the largest of Russia. states, but often the least publicized. Nonetheless, some countries have managed to make their inner circle. Of course, as a member of the EU, most of their trade and business goes through their neighbors, especially through Germany and Sweden. Iceland was the first country to recognize them after independence. The two get along great. They even have a street Thank you, Iceland, huh? Iceland. The US, Brazil, and the UK each have the largest... List of countries by suicide. I would think Japan is first. Let's check in a second. Expat communities outside of Lithuania, which has only strengthened ties over the years. 650,000 Lithuanians in America. Wow. I just found out my hometown 
and Los Angeles has a little Lithuania district. They love wow. Georgians and Ukrainians because they share the same history of being part of the former USSR. Oh. They support them in any kind of political movement against Russia. They even send foreign aid. Poland is like the ex-boyfriend that they started out really happy with, but then they fought and broke up. But over time, they moved Greenland on and are highest. just friends now. Estonia is like the childhood friend that they got along with really well, but after graduation, they kind of moved on, and Estonia got more and more obsessed with Finland. In the end, though, their best friend, no shocker, would be their little twin sister, Latvia. Even though the years have caused the two to grow up a little differently, they still moved forward, keeping traditions alive, sharing the old mystical Baltic charm. In conclusion, Lithuania is the larger of the last surviving Baltic peoples on the planet, and it's quite amazing how they've held it all together to this day. But seriously, if you don't want to become extinct, start making babies. You too, Bulgaria. Those diaspora immigration rates are quite alarming. Stay tuned. Luxembourg is coming up. Interesting. Very interesting.